welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm expanding on the generational maturity video. If you haven't watched that video, watch that video before you watch this video, so this video will make sense. So, when I was growing up in the 1980s, a few times, I remember being told or hearing or reading or whatever that Basically, the rest of the world was 20 years behind the United States at that point, right? And that was like, you know, you could see 1960s era uh, popularity stuff from the United States coming into popularity in different parts around the world in the 1980s type of thing, right? So there was at the point now we're at internet now so everything's out the window but when you would say something like that I think that it applies uh, to the cities so you have for instance even within the United States uh, generational maturity in the cities isn't generic or wasn't generically the same level across cities. For instance, New York is probably the most advanced, was, you know, at a time, for a time period, okay? And, you know, cities around that in proximity, you know, would be similar and then the radius goes out around the world. And then maybe places like Paris and London are on the same generational maturity level as New York within, you know, a certain degree, okay? But then you'd have places around the world, other cities that, you know, uh, Moscow or whatever, uh, Beijing, that were back in time, basically, right? Well, this was the 1980s that this was the theory, okay? So, now, what I have experienced moving from a city that was a pretty advanced, pretty progressive city when I left uh, to a very regressive rural area, okay? And I've noticed the generational maturity of the area I live in is, you know, depending on who exactly we're talking about, is at least 20 years in the past, but maybe even going all the way up to like, you know, 50, 60 years in the past, okay? The generational maturity level of rural areas is much lower than cities, drastically. And I'm gonna use my experience with roasting coffee to kind of explain this. So I've been roasting my own coffee for like eight or nine years now. And what I get out of this roaster is just delicious. And it was awesome. When I moved out here, I continued to roasting, but I was looking to start new revenue sources. And I thought having a little micro roaster would be cool. Hook my neighbors up with good deals on coffee. Okay, long story short, I never could get the roaster dialed in the big one that I spent a considerable amount of money on I just never could get it to roast anywhere near as good as the other roaster so I personally didn't like the coffee as I was tweaking with it experimenting trying to get better coffee out of it I was ending up with coffee that I didn't want to consume so I was giving it away okay You'd think, you know, I'm just giving somebody some coffee. I mean, I mean, a, a bag of coffee cost me about two bucks or something like that, right? So, like, giving somebody two dollars, 
does I don't even think twice. You know, it's like, you know, I'm just giving you like, well, when you have a very low generational maturity, that two bag, a two dollar bag coffee, then becomes. Because when you don't have generational maturity, then you're kind of like one of those types of people that it's just like out for themselves and just like there's nothing free in life. And if somebody's giving you something for free, it's because they want something out of you or something like this. And it's like this is like a low level generation, like the lack of generational maturity is if somebody just gives you a $2 bag of coffee and then you think that that $2 bag of coffee is got some strings attached to it or is an attempt to what, I mean, I don't even know, but let's just say it's, it's pretty bad what the generational maturity it is in this area. Like you literally can't give somebody a bag of coffee without them thinking that you're trying to, I don't even know, hook up with their wives, their daughters, their goats, their chickens, their donkeys, their dogs. Like, I don't know. The, the, the level of generational maturity where you just can't say, like, why are you giving me this coffee? And I'll be like, because it's two bucks and I don't want to drink it. But you accept the coffee. And then you're like, well, what is he going to want from me next? Like, wow, that's some, I feel sorry for those people. I really do. And it's like these poor, low IQ, with zero generational maturity people riddle the rural areas. It's super bad. They literally are living and, and a lot of them would like to bring us all back, you know, depending on the person, you know, at least 50, 60 years, if not a few hundred, if not a couple thousand. They think it was just, you know, roses and peaches and stuff back in the past. And they have no vision of what the greatest possibilities of our human species are ahead of us, okay? And this is generational maturity. If you're just such a caveman, I guess would be a great term, that you literally can't either accept the coffee and just, you know, be grateful, or if you have a question as to what the origins of the coffee were or why, you know, you would vocalize that as a person that had generational maturity. But if you're like a cave person, you just like, like take the coffee now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, what are you gonna try to get from me now? <laughs> I got your coffee. <laughs> I ain't giving you nothing back. <laughs> you know, that's like what I'm dealing with out here. And it's really, it's kind of fascinating from an intellectual point of view, what goes through cave people's minds, right? I mean, it's just fascinating to me, okay? So at this point, I think as far as the generational maturity is concerned, we have people that are connected to the internet and connected to the earth, and we have people who aren't. And it's hard for people like myself, who are like so far advanced, I've written books about what a great future we could have in video form. You can actually watch them right here on this channel in the resource-based economy playlist right there. That's an entire book, how we could make this world, and this is like the pinnacle of generational maturity. So taking everything that we have good about society and amplifying that to its maximum and deleting all the bad and having a wonderful world, which is completely possible. The only thing that's stopping that is people without generational maturity. And there's also a component to those same people without generational maturity they're also 
people who are scarcity oriented people versus abundance oriented people. So we have people on earth that have had abundance and have abundance and in their uh, relationship with the earth they were living in abundance, okay? Then we had the scarcity people come along and pretty much just murder everybody that was like that. Like all the pagans in Europe massacred by the scarcity crowd, okay? And then they came over and massacred the Native Americans and massacred over here, massacred over there, genocide over there. I mean, they've really been on a tangent to produce scarcity, right? And their idea of abundance is this monocrop nightmare that's gonna collapse. Mm, yeah. So the generational maturity of rural areas that are actually in charge of a lot of our food, okay? So people who aren't that generationally mature are running our entire food supply or a good portion thereof, okay? People who refuse to consider intensively grazing cattle and restoring grasslands and, and restoring wetlands. They just refuse to, you know, to dig the well deeper. So this is really the, one of the biggest challenges facing a perfect world is the lack of generational maturity that commingles with ancient cults. So if people are in a cult, it's very hard to grow maturity wise when your cult, I mean, any cult really restricts your ability to think appropriately regardless of the age of the cult. It could be a 2,000 year old cult or it could be a five year old cult. A cult is a cult and there is no generational maturity within cults, okay? Very regressive organizations, cults, okay? So this has been a quick video about generational maturity. I coined the term, I started this whole conversation. If you like this video and wanna see more of these videos, just subscribe, it's free. Hit the like button, peace, have a great day. Thank you for watching my video.